Aldo Medical College at the University of Health Science. Um, she is an aspire she's an aspiring obstetrician. Her current research interests are maternal and fetal health, infectious diseases, community and public health in general. So Miriam is going to be sharing her journey on an infodemiological original article on Google Trends related to telemedicine in countries with over 200,000 COVID cases over a period of six months. She has six public, she has nine publications so far, including three original articles and a case report. So without further, further ado, um, we can start with the presentation. Just a reminder to keep yourself muted and to leave questions in the chat box so Miriam can answer them by the end of the presentation. You can go ahead, Miriam. All right. So good evening, everyone. As introduced by Aya, my name is Mariam, and I'm a final year medical student from Dow Medical College, Pakistan. The paper that I'm going to be talking about today is, um, I'm just going to start the screen sharing. Just wait for a moment, please. Yeah, so this is it. And we can see it. Okay. So, so it is on global interest in telehealth during COVID-19 pandemic and analysis of Google Trends. Briefly talking about the paper, so as to give you guys an idea what it is about, uh, we took 17 countries that had greater than 200,000 COVID-19 cases. And in those countries, we basically evaluated the relationship between Google Trends of telemedicine and the new daily cases of COVID-19. Um, if I talk like roughly, there are three components basically to this research. That is telehealth, COVID-19 pandemic, and then Google Trends. Um, this research, when we talked about uh, doing this talk, uh, I selected this research because it's a different one from you know my previous researches. It is an original article, but it's also based on infodemiology, which is, um, I guess, relatively a new genre of research that has emerged after the SARS pandemic of 2002 to 2004. So basically, in, what is infodemiology? Um, the, Official jargon to this is that is as you can see on the guys as you guys can see on the screen, it is the science of distribution and determinants of information in an electronic medium, specifically the internet or in a population with the ultimate aim to inform public health and public policy. Simply put, it's using internet data to um, basically collecting internet data and then using using it with the goal of improving public health. Now to explain this with an example, um, you, we all know that this is the digital era, it is 2020 and everybody has a cell phone, a smartphone and everybody now has access to internet due to 5G and 4G respectively. So um, taking, if I'm talking about medicine, and I'm gonna take an example of Karachi because that's where I live. So. Um, for example, here dengue is uh, dengue fever uh, happens between like after June, basically after monsoon rainfall. So if a person who's like me who always Google's his or her symptoms, if you know something happens, so what would happen Im immediately? The season would come, the July season would come, and you'd start hearing that oh dengue dengue cases have surged. So what you do if you get you know, like fever or something, you'd obviously Google it, you'd write dengue fever or how to treat dengue at home, what are the symptoms of dengue, and that data is recorded. So with scientists, when they saw, what they saw is that in particular seasons, in particular timings, especially when we're talking about infectious diseases, there is surge in real-time internet data corresponding to that event. For example, when if I'm talking about dengue, that this happened in Indonesia, where between 20, 2012 and 2015, they studied Google trends of dengue data, and that actually statistically corresponded with their official dengue report that the surges happened when there was dengue was endemic and the cases uh, in the in Indonesia were serving uh, surging, and at the same time, 
uh, Google Trends data of the de dengue, the RSV, RSV recorded was particularly high. So this is infodemiological research. This is how you can apply digital technology in public health surveillance and info surveillance. Now, uh, about my particular topic, how did we uh, choose our topic and how did it came about? As I talked that it has three components, basically. It has um, Google Trends, it has COVID-19, and it has telemedicine. Now, when we to generally talk about choosing a topic, it happens that there are three, three ways that you decide on a topic. It is either based on a topic of self-interest or Sorry, it's a hot topic like COVID-19 or um, something else like at the time when I was like really interested in uterine transplant uh, because I heard in some place that they had recently successfully done. So it's either a hot topic, it's a topic of self-interest or it or it is something that you find after an extensive literature search. It's, it may be something that may be done in another area in another country or it may be a gap in literature that the person particularly wants to fill. In the case of our topic, um, the hot topic was COVID-19. The self-interest topic was um, telemedicine. My co-author, uh, Dr. Arsha Dali, we always talked about that we wanted to do something in telemedicine because in Pakistan, hardly anyone knows about it. And I think there are very few hospitals who would be, you know, doing teleconsultations. So this was always a topic that was very interested in us. Um, the th third thing that was Google Trends that was incorporated by our other co-author that was Dr. Mab. She suggested that after extensive literature search that what you guys can do is, you know, incorporate the telemedicine and um, COVID-19 and see how are the Google Trends and how they are happening in this particular time. Um, to give you guys a brief information or a definition on telemedicine is something that is, or teleconsultation is something that is a clinical medicine, which is conducted from a distance. And it actually establishes a connection between physician and patients in multitude of settings. Um, this, the, we came like, we decided that these are the three elements that we wanted to not incorporate in our search. Uh, research, but there were other things that we also took into uh, took into consideration, and that was that how we are going to execute it. Um, there, it is very important when you choose a topic. There has to be like you know some paper, some uh, at least a single paper to be there on that particular topic so that it is easy for us to do a research for and specific uh, especially for novices who are doing their first paper it is great if they they can find you know a few articles that have done uh, similar research or is research based on similar methodology for example in our case there were a um, few articles that we saw on google trends uh, like the dengue one i found one on measles uh, with respect to covid-19 there were a lot of articles that were you know uh, researching about covid uh, public interest in covid-19 and its google trends uh, in particular countries in our topic is uh, specifically where we were investigating the google trends of telemedicine in the countries that we chose we only found a single paper that was a us paper that, which was a national health service uh, national level based survey where they were investigating public health and telemedicine and then investigated how many people actually did teleconsultation. So it was a very good study. We took just the uh, Google health, uh, trend, trend part and then that was how our topic came to be. There were other two options that we were considering regarding our topic. One was, you know, doing a simple knowledge attitude and practice survey, but um, our co-authors kind of like didn't want it because it was like too common. And the other thing was actually, you know, approaching it, uh, uh, any cl clinician who's doing teleconsultation and, you know, asking for him for data and extracting data and then seeing how people are actually um, how many people are actually doing teleconsultation in Pakistan and, you know, uh, other factors, so on and so forth. But uh, that thing is covered in my later uh, slide. Why didn't we go through that route in specific? So after a lot of discussion, like, and we incorporated this, the Google Trend parts was 
our innovation, our uh, self-discovery that we did on lit uh, literature search. And then this topic came about after, you know, consultation with all of the co-authors that was there. Um, RRB approval. So as I was saying that um, we wanted to do we wanted to twist the topic and you know extract data from clinicians and see how people are really doing in teleconsultations and their satisfaction and the uh, satisfaction of the consultants and everything but there were two problems there number one was that um, you can't do that uh, when you're stuck in your home in quarantine as everybody was approaching the clinician getting things done is difficult at this time and secondly that getting the approval from colleges in our country is very um i would say difficult it's a tedious job it's time consuming and sometimes it's not very successful so we tailored our topic we said that by doing and by taking data that is publicly available like we used uh situation reports from who that yeah, that are published every week uh, across the span of six months and we took google google trends data that is also publicly available so we basically you have uh, we basically by, uh, passed this process of IRB approval. Our research didn't need IRB. So that was one thing that we were very um, particular about that we wanted to do some paper, paper that is easy to publish and that doesn't require approaching our institution and getting approval because it's very difficult to be honest. And as students, it is, I think, very important to choose a topic that is easy and it's easy to execute. So obstacles. So um, this paper did not come easily to us. Figuring out the topic was only the first step. We encountered difficulties in almost everything, and that included methodology of this paper. So we just came across this idea that we wanted to do Google Trends, but we had no, absolutely no idea how the methodology was going to be executed. Here comes to the rescue that I talked about, the previous paper, the key articles that one should always have in backup so that you know research becomes easy, especially if you are novices, always have two to three key articles articles that you can always rely on rely on so we started re uh, reading papers and we found quite a lot of stuff that was based on google trends then a lot of stuff that was based on telemedicine and by reading a lot of papers we figured out methodology um we took uh, we were very clear that we wanted to study worldwide trend and the thing about two, uh, deciding 200,000 cases were done, was done arbitrarily, actually. We wanted a mark, okay, okay, a sort of mark where we could take most of the countries that had, you know, positive cases and or most of the countries from every region of the world and countries that had been uh, hotspots for the virus, except for China, because it didn't cross 100. I think it hasn't even crossed the 100,000 mark. So countries that were hotspots or were emerging as hotspots. So that was one of the points that we were very clear in our methodology. So the 200,000 mark was for that. And then uh, because we wanted data that was publicly available, we did like, uh, we extracted data from WHO, uh, WHO situation reports, because it was again, easy to access plus, you know, there is certain credibility to the source when you are taking the data itself from World Health Organization. So that was the second point. Um, that was it. And then the countries that were included in our research was Iran, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, Saudi Arabia, um, Russia, UK, Spain, Italy, Turkey, Germany, US, Brazil, Peru, Chile. So seven countries in total, most of them had a lot of cases had been hotspots or were emerging as one as was the case with US in that six month period between January 21 and July 21. Now coming to analysis again, this research was a bit different to my previous projects. Uh, most of the analysis that we usually did was based on like one-way ANOVA or simple t-test or chi-square test. 
because the do variables that we took in this study were continuous variables the rsv data the re relative search volume for google trends ranged between 0 and 100 and the cases as you know was also in numbers and the data was continuous so both sets were continuous and we were in a dilemma because we did we couldn't do any of the usual tests that we did before so on once again taking help from the previous paper we figured out that in that this kind of data where you want to find correlation between two continuous variables you either use pearson or spearman pearson is used if the data is nominal and Pierce, uh, Spearman, if used, if your data is not normally distributed. When we applied the Shapiro will test on our data, the RSV, that was the uh, R variable that we applied, uh, that the previous studies also applied their normality test to. We found out that our data was not normally distribu uh, distributed. And eventually it was decided that we are going to do our analysis by Spearman correlation test. Then again, there is a certain uh, degree of correlation that you find in this type of test. The data is moderately positively correlated, strongly correlated, not um, fairly correlated. So on that issue, we, we had to find a paper that had properly marked specific um, Point 0.8 to above correlation would be strongly correlated. Point 0.8 to point 0.5 would be moderately correlated, and beyond that would be fairly or mildly correlated. In that uh, account, in that matter, there was a paper by Chan that was that we used, and we used this as a difference in our methodology. And by using that paper, we could actually define what are the ranges of uh, and the strength of correlation that our study had. Okay. That time frame for the study wasn't an obstacle in the sense that when you take in COVID-19 in specific, this is a situation where papers are get new papers are emerging by the day, and the get data that we have gets old really fast. So we wanted a quick paper, a paper that was recent, and a paper that could be cited. And all of that could happen if the time span was for the study would be you know short, like two months or three months. And we had to wind our paper in that specific time amount. So getting that paper done from figuring out a topic to deciding methodology to coming to analysis and the right getting the writing part done was very difficult in that span of time so time frame for the study was difficult but we did it and the paper got published so journal choice journal choice once again was an obstacle because when our timeline actually was extended we were trying to do it like in a two and a half months or three months span, but it actually got uh, uh, extended to september i think yes we submitted our paper in september so journal choice was based on this and because we are we are based in pakistan so we did not have a lot of uh, institutional support we did not have a lot of um money and we could not afford author publication charges so we wanted something that a paper that could get that our paper could uh, be easily published in we wanted a journal that could you know easily publish our journal uh, paper so that were the few points that our journal choice was based on and Moving on to next, yes, we did get accepted at the first try because we were very specific on the kind of journal we wanted to send our paper to. There are a lot of journals that take a lot of time in processing your articles. The article processing time can range from six months to one month. And we wanted something that was quick so that the data doesn't get old. And if, you know, they reject our paper. We have time to, you know, again reevaluate it, re-edit it, and send to another journal. So quick time frame for processing the article was one point that we wanted for our journal. The journal should be free, no APC charges, as I said, because you know they range from a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars, and it's better for us students that are pro that you find a journal that is free and we wanted a journal uh, that is open access because to gain greater visibility for the greater visibility of your paper it is very necessary that the paper be published in an open access journal so that was a very important point for us and 
these three points that's why we did not go for a very high tier journal like lens said because it's like you like i said it had apc charges it takes a lot it takes a lot of time in replying for the first time and it is open access but you know those two points were not in our favor the last two points so that was that and we did get accepted in the first uh, try and because we were very specific in the criteria we set for the journal that we wanted our paper to be published into so that's it okay so last slide actually so here is my email address if you know research is all about collaboration there were times that i couldn't do a thing and i had to ask a lot of people from advice uh, i asked i approached a lot of my uh, teachers i approached uh, statisticians and this was a very collaborative effort dr ochani that joined our paper who's also a co-author in this paper was specifically taken into this paper so that he could tell about tell us about and correct all these statistics we, that we were doing so if there is one take home message that i would give is be collaborative in your endeavors whatever you are taking take advice never hesitate to approach and try to take people that are cooperative and dedicated to your uh, to the work as you are so this is my email address if somebody wants any kind of advice any sort of cooperation or future collaboration my profile is also available on research gate if you guys would like to take you know a look at all the papers this particular paper is published in an open access journal by the name of curious c u r e u s so just go and give it a read thank you over to you aya thank you miriam that was a great presentation very informative question in the chat box from taimur he's asking um his survey original article was declined and asked for preferred editing on Curious. How did you publish burn research in Curious? Did they ask for editing? Um, just a moment, please. Can you repeat the question to me? Because I didn't get it. Yeah, so he's asking that his survey article, his hmm. survey original article was declined and asked for preferred editing on Curious. Okay. How did you publish burn research in Curious? Did they ask for editing? Okay, so um, th that was a very good question. And Curious did, uh, does go for you know preferred editing services, but that is only in the case where your article has a lot of mistakes. And they have this policy where you, they give you one deferral. And if there are like more than two deferrals, then they, uh, automatically the article would go for the preferred editing services one way that you can avoid this is like go your article go through your article extensively vigorously set up a group chat with all your authors and you know assign everybody a section of the paper go through it grammatically see that all the references are proper and curious has a very very specific i would say um process or uh, article uploading process see that you haven't made mistake in any of these things we also run our paper through grammarly or any grammar editing software and the only thing that you can do is make sure that that it is on the curious format and just you know very gra it's you know very appropriate according to the grammar and you know no just you know go through it and avoid making mistakes and you know avoid getting more than one deferral that's all we did i think we took like 15 days just 15 days for going through the articles so that we could found a, find any mistakes that are happening so he just said that his article had an impact as it addressed an unspoken risk factor for hepatitis b and c but they said they are selective in knowledge type surveys um I just wait a moment, please. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yes, they are. Um, it would be better to answer this question if you just email me this thing. Um, 
okay there is also this one thing that the, the your article does have an impact but you know they have they have they're gradually becoming very strict in their uh, publication process so that's why they probably you know just defer the article back to you you can email it to me and i can you know write a few pointers if i find something that i can you know usefully contribute to just email the article to me because it's very difficult to you know just give an advice like that point blank awesome any other question any other i guess that's it thank you so much maren for your presentation do you guys have any questions you have or email have, don't hesitate to contact her and uh with that said i guess you guys can all enjoy the rest of your day slash night thank you Thank you.